Hey there, my beautiful people. Maggie J. Also here, your go-to guru for all things real estate. Today, we're about to dive headfirst into the wild and wonderful world of Florida real estate taxes. We'll dive into what those three different taxes are, who typically pays for them, and how to calculate these taxes. So when you're faced with these types of questions on your state exam, you know exactly what to do. But don't worry, I promise it's going to be more fun than a beach party in the Sunshine State. Okay, maybe not that fun. But anyway, grab your flip-flops, I mean calculators, and your thinking caps because we're about to break it all down in a way that's as breezy as a beachside cocktail. Let's get this tax fiesta started. The real estate business isn't just about buying and selling. It's about understanding the financial puzzle that makes it all tick. And right at the heart of that puzzle are three key players. Documentary stamp tax on the deed, documentary stamp tax on the note, and intangible taxes. These concepts might seem a bit confusing at first, but fear not, my future agents because by the end of this video, you'll not only grasp them like a pro, but also be well prepared to tackle your Florida real estate state exam with confidence. But before we jump right in, remember to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to ring the notification bell to stay in the loop. Now, let's unravel these mysteries. Documentary Stamp Tax on the Deed The Documentary Stamp Tax on the Deed is an excess tax imposed in Florida and typically paid by the seller at closing when documents that transfer an interest in Florida real property, like deeds, are executed, delivered, or recorded. Regardless of where the deed is signed and delivered, this tax is due. The amount of tax is based on the consideration for the transfer. This tax helps fund various government services and infrastructure projects in the state. So how much are all these taxes? Well, in all Florida counties except Miami-Dade County, when it comes to documentary stamp tax on the deed, you're looking at a rate of 70 cents for every hundred dollars or a portion thereof of the total consideration. And since Miami-Dade County likes to keep things a little different over there, it's 60 cents for every hundred dollars or a portion thereof. Okay, let's go over how it all works and find out what the heck a portion thereof means. To find the total amount a seller has to pay in documentary stamp tax on the deed, all you need to do is get the purchase price divided by 100 and that will give you the amount of taxable units. If by chance you divide the sales price by 100 and end up with a decimal, like say 2,000.5 taxable units, all you have to do is round up to the next whole number. So it would be 2,001. Think of these taxable units as literal stamps. Since you can't rip a stamp in half, you just have to add another one. And that's what a portion thereof means. We now know we have to just multiply by 70 cents or 60 cents to find the total tax due. Now that we've covered documentary stamp taxes on the deed, let's check out a sample question that you may see on your real estate state exam. A home not located in Miami-Dade County sold for $125,530. How much will the seller pay in documentary stamp taxes on the deed? Okay, so let's remember what we have to do here. We're going to take the purchase price of $125,530 and divide it by $100. When we do that, we get 1,255.3 taxable units. But remember, if we end up with a decimal, we need to round up because we can't have a portion of a stamp. So the total taxable units then becomes 
1,256. Since this property is not located in Miami-Dade County, we now know we have to just multiply by 70 cents to find the total tax due. So 1,256 times 0 0.7 equals $879.20. The seller will now have to pay in documentary stamp taxes on the deed. Let's try another one just to be on the safe side. John sold his house in Miami-Dade County for $235,400. How much will John have to pay in documentary stamp taxes on the deed at closing? Just like the previous example, all we have to do is get the sales price of John's house of $235,400 and divide by $100. We now get a total of 2,354 taxable units. Since there is no decimal, we can now just multiply that number by the Miami-Dade County rate of 60 cents. So 2,354 taxable units times 0 0.6 equals $1,412.40. Okay, now that we got doc stamps on the deed covered and know exactly what to expect on our state exam, let's move on to the taxes typically paid by the buyer, intangible taxes and documentary stamp taxes on the note. We'll start off with the intangible taxes. Intangible tax is like the fine print in a real estate transaction. It's a tax on certain financial stuff like promissory notes and mortgages, but only if they're tied to property in Florida. They take two mils, which is just a fancy way of saying 0 0.002 or two divided by 1,000 and slap it on to the amount of money that's secured by Florida real estate. It's sort of like a little fee for doing business in the state. The tax is typically paid at the time the note or mortgage is recorded, but if not paid to the county, it must be paid directly to the Florida Department of Revenue. Understanding this tax is crucial for both buyers and sellers involved in real estate transactions in Florida. So how is it all calculated? All you have to do is take the loan amount and just multiply it by two mils or 0.002. You could convert mils to decimal form by just dividing the millage rate by 1,000. A good way to remember this is if you speak Spanish, you know that mil means 1,000. But if you don't speak Spanish, well, now you know how to say 1,000 in another language. Let's take a look at a practice question similar to one that you may see on your state exam. Joshua is purchasing a $350,000 home with an LTV ratio of 85%. How much will he have to pay in intangible tax? Okay, so in this example, we have to first find the loan amount since intangible taxes are always based off the loan amount. So let's take out the T-chart so we can find the loan amount. If you're not familiar with the T-chart, I'll leave a link to a video all about it in the comments section below. Since we have the purchase price of $350,000, we can place that in the total column here. Now we take the loan to value ratio of 85% and add that to the rate column. Remember to always convert your percent into a decimal and you do that by dividing by 100. So we say, 85% is the same or equals to 85 things out of a total of 100 possible things. So then that equals 0 0.85. We see that now we have to multiply. So $350,000 times 0 0.85 equals $297,500. Now that we have the loan amount, we can find out how much this buyer will have to pay in intangible taxes at closing. Let's convert two mils into decimal so we can do the math. So two mils equals two over 1,000, 
which equals 0 0.002. Now we take $297,500 times 0 0.002, and that equals $595. Key thing to remember here is to convert the mills into decimal form by dividing by 1,000, and just make sure to multiply it by the loan amount. Let's move on to the other tax a buyer typically pays for at closing, which is the documentary stamp tax on the note. Documentary stamp tax on the note is a tax levied on written obligations to pay money, such as promissory notes. In Florida, this tax is calculated at a rate of 35 cents for every $100 or a portion thereof and is capped at $2,450. It's typically paid when the note is filed or recorded in the state. Understanding this tax is vital for anyone involved in real estate or financial transactions in Florida. Okay, so now that we know that information regarding doc stamps on the note, let's get into how this tax is calculated for the buyer. Like I said before, we have to always use the loan amount. Once you have the loan amount, divide by $100, then multiply by 35 cents. And just like we did in the documentary stamp tax on the deed, if you end up with a decimal after dividing by 100, just round up one and then multiply. Let's check out some examples. A buyer takes out a mortgage in the amount of $350,200. How much will the buyer pay in documentary stamp tax on the note at closing? For this example, we are already given the loan amount, which is $350,200. So we'll just divide that amount by $100 and get a total of 3,502 taxable units. Since we are not left with a decimal answer, all we have to do is multiply by 35 cents. So 3,502 times 0 0.35 equals $1,225.70 that the buyer will have to pay in documentary stamp tax on the note. Let's look at another example. This one will be a bit more challenging. Matthew purchased the property for $400. $5,050. He gave a 20% down payment for this property. How much did he pay in documentary stamp tax on the note? Okay, so remember, whenever you're dealing with a buyer, you need to find the loan amount. In this example, we're given the sales price and the rate of the buyer's down payment. Since we have this information, we can easily find the loan amount. Now, there are two ways to solve this problem and I will go over both ways. Here's the first and pretty much most common method to solve this problem. We begin with the values that are given in this question. So let's take out the T-chart and place the sales price of $405,050 in the total column. And the 20% down payment will go in the rate column. Let's convert 20% into a decimal. So 20% is the same thing as 20 over 100, which equals 0 0.2. Now you see we have to multiply. So $405,050 times 0 0.2 equals $81,010. Now, remember, that's just the down payment. So now we can just subtract the down payment amount from the sales price of $405,050. When we subtract the sales price minus the down payment, we'll get a total loan amount of $324,040. Now that we have the loan amount, we are ready to start the math to find the total amount due in documentary stamp tax on the note or loan. So now all we do is get the loan amount of $324,040, divide by $100 and get 
40.4 taxable units. Since we're left with a remainder or a decimal number, you know what to do. Round that number up one to a whole number. So we get 3,241 total taxable units. Now we're ready to multiply by 35 cents. So 3,241 times 0 0.35 equals $1,134.35 in documentary stamp tax on the note that is due from the buyer at closing. Here's another way to work out this problem. Since we know the buyer is putting a 20% down payment, that means their loan amount will be the remainder of that. That means the loan amount will be equivalent to 80%. Think of it as a sales price is 100%. And in that sales price, you have a down payment and a loan amount, each holding a different percentage. So if the sales price is 100% and the down payment is 20%, that means that the loan amount has to be 80%. Since we know the loan percentage or rate, we can just multiply the sales price by 80% and get the loan amount right away, skipping the second step of subtracting the down payment like we did in the first method. So let's continue. $405,050 will go in the total column, and then the 80% loan rate will go in the percent column. Convert 80% to a decimal by dividing by 100, which is going to give you 0 0.8. Now we multiply $405,050 times 0 0.8, and that gives us a total loan amount of $324,040. And then you do the same thing as the previous example. Divide the loan amount by $100 to get 3,240.4 taxable units. Round up one because we can't have a portion of a stamp. So 3,241 times 35 cents equals $1,134.35. Don't worry if you don't understand the second method. As long as you learn one method, you'll be just fine. Stick to the one that you feel most comfortable with. Okay, so now that we've gone over the three different taxes in Florida, when the transfer of real property occurs and a mortgage has been originated, here's a quick recap and a way to remember them all. Just remember the word sin. Fitting, huh? The S stands for the tax the seller is responsible for, which are the documentary stamp tax on the deed. A way to remember this is that the seller delivers the deed to the new buyer. The cost of this tax is 70 cents per $100 or fraction thereof for all counties except Miami-Dade County. And Miami-Dade County's stamp tax is 60 cents per $100 or fraction thereof. Remember the fraction thereof part, that's talking about the decimal portion that you may end up getting after dividing the sales price by $100. If you get a decimal, just round up one more, then multiply by 60 or 70 cents, depending on what county the property is in. Okay, now on to the buyer's taxes. So the I stands for intangible tax. This one's easy because all you have to do is multiply the loan amount by two mils, which we learned in this video is to just divide the millage rate by 1,000 to convert it into a decimal of 0 0.002. So loan amount times 0 0.002 and you get the total amount of intangible tax due by the buyer. And the N stands for documentary stamp tax on the note. Just like we call dollar bills notes and another word for bills or notes is money, think of it like a mortgage is money, therefore it's a documentary stamp tax on the loan or note. Hopefully that'll help you remember who pays what 
for your exam. The same rules apply here with the decimal portion. So make sure to round up if you divide the loan amount by $100 and end up with a decimal. With documentary stamp tax on the note, we just multiply the loan amount by 35 cents and we're good to go. That wraps up our explanation of Florida real estate taxes. I hope I was able to clarify this concept a little more for you guys. If you found this video helpful, make sure to show some love by giving it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Leave me a question or comment below. And don't forget to ring that notification bell so you never miss any of our videos. If you're looking for a way to improve your math skills, stay tuned after this video for more information on how you can crush the math on your state exam. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video. If you're looking to elevate your math understanding and boost your chances of acing the real estate exam, I want to share something special with you. Introducing Math Skills for Real Estate Success, your ultimate companion to mastering real estate math packed with comprehensive exercises, step-by-step -step explanations, and invaluable tips. This workbook is designed to help you conquer any math challenge that comes your way. Head over to justcallmaggie.com forward slash shop and grab your copy today. Trust me, this workbook will be your secret weapon in becoming a math wits in the world of real estate.